This is round three of the 2014 European Rally Championship, the ERC, the legendary Acropolis Rally, the Rally of the Gods. Event based in Lutraki near the Gulf of Corinth. It's magnificent. Look at the amazing scenery. We are standing on a bridge, in the middle of a bridge on the Canal of Corinth with uh, Vasily Gryazin, second in the driver's standings in the European Championship. Vasily, what's, what's your feeling standing here? I feel a little bit afraid because uh, there is very high and uh, it's not so comfortable for me. <laughs> of course, you're here for the Acropolis Rally 2014 edition. What's your opinion on the rally? Uh, the rally is very good and uh, there is very good that it's in the first day it's tarmac and on the second day it's a gravel. The tarmac roads here is very good, it's quite wide and uh, the gravel roads is very good, I very like it. It's Sometimes it's narrow, sometimes it's wide and uh, a lot of corners. Located 65 kilometers west of Athens, Lutraki is well known for its vast natural springs and therapeutic spas that have been coming here for many, many years. Hundreds, in fact. Uh, running for the 60th time in 2014, and back in the ERC for the first time since 1968, the Acropolis Rally has undergone a major revamp for 2014, as you've heard. Leg one will be fast asphalt, leg two, traditional rough gravel tracks. The 2014 Acropolis Rally is the very first rally for the Peugeot 208 T16 in the ERC. The 208 T16 is the successor to the 207 S2000. It's an R5 car with a 1.6 turbo engine. The testing has been very long. Uh, we've done a lot of hard work, so uh, yeah, I think it's ready. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a new car, and when uh, but when, when you put the stickers on the side of rally cars and, and, and start them in a rally, things begin to appear that didn't appear in the test. So I think me and Kevin are, are waiting to come to the end of the first three practice and see you know, roughly where, where we can be. So Until then, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to prepare like I would if it was any other rally with the 207 and, uh, and see how it goes. Craig Brain has a new teammate. It is Kevin Abring in the other car. Well, you know about Craig, but Kevin is a former Volkswagen factory driver, and after he lost his drive with VW, Kevin came back strong last year, winning the Peugeot 208 Rally Cup in France, which earned him a six-round program in the ERC with the T16. Well, it's important for us to collect data for the whole team. Uh, for that, this rally is perfect, and uh, as we can check on tarmac and gravel, of course. And furthermore, uh, we'll be demonstrating the potential of the car ourselves. And, uh, but for sure, I'll need some time to get back into the rhythm. A serious competition ahead between the two Peugeot Sport teammates, Craig Green and Kevin Abrick. So which man will come out on top? We come good overeen. Oh, we get along well, uh, but on the other hand, we're both here to perform well this year. Um, he's a bit more experienced in a four-wheel drive car at this level, but uh, maybe I can learn a bit from him, but uh, we're a bit nervous about it. It's actually good fun. Uh, me and Kevin are, are very good friends with, with some years, so uh, I appreciate uh, what, what he has to, to bring to the team, and uh, I, I hope he thinks the same. So, uh, yeah, it will be really exciting here. Uh, yeah, we always get on very well, so uh, and I think uh, I think there will be some interesting fights during the season. Yeah. So, gentlemen, start your engines. Time to tackle the first loop of three stages. A first taste of Greek tarmac, indeed. Oh, an amazing start for Abring from the Lowlands. The last time he competed in a four-wheel drive car on tarmac was the Monte Carlo in 2012. Uh, Kevin has a new co-driver, Seb Marshall, reading notes in English with some French words like affront, um, and he takes the lead after stage three. The rally is 
is full of uh, surprises. The, the tarmac, the, the grip, tarmac grip changes all the time. The 70 stop up, Titans to five minus. Well, I bring Titans keep Beek's in. teammate Breen in the first two stages, but on stage three, it's Breen's turn maybe. to be fastest within the Peugeot team. Stop up late, four left plus and crest, and very sudden, six right plus. Titans of a bridge. Into. Abrig's time, 10.09.7. Breen's time about to appear now, 10.05.9, beating Abrig by 3.8. I don't know, it, it's, the surface is so slippy in some places and it looks the very same as it, as it is everywhere else, so very difficult to predict, but we've got around it anyway and uh, the speed hasn't been so bad. Brian Bouffier had a great start in the previous ERC round in Latvia, uh, winning the first stage, but he damaged the radiator of his Citroen on the next stage and had to retire. Brian is back with the ERC in Greece, winning the first stage, as he did in Latvia. Sadly for him, though, on the second stage, Bouffier suffering a puncture, losing 18 seconds, dropping to fourth overall. And on stage three, Bouffier had another setback going straight on and a right-hand hairpin, another four seconds lost. Here's Kato, Polish rally champion Keitan Kejatanovic, um, competing for the first time in Greece, as most of the top drivers are. He's pushed hard on tarmac, his favourite surface, incidentally. Sadly, though, on the second stage, Kato makes a mistake, losing about 10 seconds. Well, after three stages, the turbo cars are ahead in the standings with both Peugeot T16s, uh, the Ford R5 and the Citroen RRC up there. While well, the factory Skoda of ERC points leader Esapaki Lapi has top speed of 170 kilometers per hour, but the turbo cars are doing 200 kph and have more torque coming out of the slow corners. Lapi tries his best, but isn't a match for the R5 and the RRC machinery, or RCC, I beg your pardon. And on top of that, Lapi gets a 10 second penalty after jumping the start on stage three. He's only six after three stages. Snatching at it doesn't work, right? Abring leading Breen then by 2.9, heading for the midday service at Lutraki. Portuguese rally star Bruno Megales is back in the ERC, competing in Greece at the wheel of a Peugeot 207 S2000. Bruno is here to prepare for the ERC round of the Azores and he'll be competing there with a the Peugeot T16. It's amazing to, to, be, to be here one more time. Uh, I have a good program uh, with six rallies for this year. I'm trying new sponsors to to make more rallies this year, but if, it, if, it's, if it's not possible, I will think in the next season. I'm waiting for the for the new car, for the next race, for the source. And because of that, I'm here with the 207, because uh, I have only made six rallies in two years, so uh, I need to recover some of my rhythm. Magalhães has made the right tyre choice in the first, running on the hardest Pirelli compound. And he's struggling a bit with the setup of the 207, run by the Italian team Delta Rally. Bruno, seventh after the opening leg. Well, we have more action for you from the second loop. And reigning European champion Jan Kopetsky is our special guest, commentating from the helicopter. Back in a moment. Back with the Acropolis rally in Greece, tackling the afternoon loop now. Set Vigant, fifth after three stages, 8.3 seconds ahead of Skoda teammate Lappi. Uh, but on stage four, Wigan's suspension gets damaged and Sepp has to retire for the day, sadly. Uh, dinks. dinks indeed. Next on the road, Kevin Ambrick, leader of the rally, passing the damaged Skoda of Vigant. 
Looking good, but sadly on the following stage, stage five, Abrings Peugeot suffering a water leak and the engine began to run hot. Sadly, Kevin having to retire from the lead. Adieu, Acropolis. Breen takes the lead in the rally after Abrings retirement. Craig fastest on stage six, the last special of leg one. Into right, tightens the flat three, in up a crest, 30, big stop up, left up a crest, tightens the slow, five plus sharp, camber, mud maybe, 80, right, open to 50, tightens Good the work. slow, four minus sharp at the pole. It's starting to get a little bit slippy in some places, but glad to get to the end of the first day. Uh, I'd really, really hope to think we can keep on to the lead uh, overnight. I think it'll be a fantastic achievement. Well, there's a heavy battle for second overall between Kejatanovic and Bouffier. Both drivers have been competing against each other in the Polish Championship, and they know each other extraordinarily well. Okay, there's time at the end of stage six, a 10-0-3. Uh, let's see how Bouffier compares to Keita. Bouffier on stage six has a one second deficit to Cato at the start of the stage. So, as you know, Cato did a 10 0 3. Bouffier finding some um, missing time, a little bit of gravel mixed in with it. And indeed, Bouffier was heading to be faster. 1.3 seconds, meaning Bouffier jumps ahead of Cato to second overall. The gap now just 0.3 of a second. It's been a, a good positive day, and even though I've made some mistakes, the car felt just perfect. That's a fact, and uh, regarding the tricky conditions, well, we can be happy. Tomorrow there is another big day to come, he says. He's right. Breen, though, with a lead over Bouffier, 14.7 seconds, just 0.3 further behind is Kejatanovic. Lapi, 43 adrift, and heading for the two-minute mark, Grashin. So the last service of the day, very busy time for the crews as they have to rebuild the cars for the gravel stages of leg two. Jan Kopetsky, the reigning European Rally Champion, is attending the Acropolis Rally. Uh, this year, he's not competing in the ERC, but preparing for the Asian Pacific Championship. Jan, our guest. As you will see, the stages tomorrow, uh, they can be quite rough, uh, and so that's why we need uh, to have uh, uh, longer travel of the, of the damper and uh, of course the car is much softer than, than on the tarmac. It has to roll uh, to get some feeling with the car to, to have a, a better traction uh, and then on tarmac it's a little bit opposite. It's very low, hard and of course the grip on the tarmac is, uh, is, is much better than, gra than on gravel. The brake disc in the front is, uh, is on gravel much, much smaller because you are using only 15 inches tires. On the tarmac, it's 18 inch inside, so the brake discs can be much bigger. Now they are uh, taking down uh, the rear cross member with the rear diff. Uh, they will change it also because, uh, again, you have different, different arms over there, and uh, also the setup uh, inside of this, of this rear diff is different uh, on tarmac than on gravel. On gravel, it's more loose because the car is sliding much more easier than, uh, than, uh, than, than on tarmac, so the setting is uh, much softer. Gearbox is out and the new one is coming in because again the diff, uh, front diff has a, a little bit different setup than, uh, than on tarmac. Mm -hmm. 